Hi everyone, it's the English Simmer here and welcome back to my channel and today's video which is actually all about the brand new update for The Sims 4. It was released today. I am gonna throw up a quick little reminder to back up every single Sims 4 file that you have. Also remove your mods folder before updating because yes if you have script mods or more columns or any big mods they will be broken. Welcome Simmers, a relaxing getaway sure sounds right. Nice, <laughs> thanks. Yep, that does, that does sound nice, but guess what? It's 2020 and England is back in lockdown and I can't go anywhere. Uh, so thank you, Sims team, I appreciate it. We're inviting you to take a trip with your Sims to your favorite destination. Well, if I can't travel, my Sims may as well make the most of it. With the newly added ability to vacation anywhere within The Sims 4. Platforms enable you to build rooms at varying heights within a story level. I'm basically gonna be using this for like stages and also like raising bed platforms and things like that. Definitely just gonna help to add a little bit of character to your rooms and your homes. Split leveling is now an official thing in The Sims 4. We are gonna be going over platforms, how they work, what you can build out of them. I am not a builder though, so if you wanna see all of the crazy stuff that builders can do, I would definitely suggest you go watch Builder. For example, how about Simlessy or Simproved or James Turner? There's plenty of builders here on YouTube. I am not one of them. We're gonna go through all of that. I'm not gonna read all of this. If you do want to read all of this, then I will leave a link to it down below so you can go check it out in more detail. Speaking of half walls, we're pleased to share that we've created 12 additional half wall heights to choose from, adding to the seven heights previously available. Then we also get sentiments. I, as a gameplay person, Simmer, I am so excited about this. We're gonna be diving into this a little bit as well in this little video. Sentiments are those special fuzzy feelings that form between Sims when they share a memorable moment together. Shared experiences between Sims now offer the opportunity for Sims to develop long lasting sentiments between each other, which in turn affects how they feel and act in the presence or absence of another particular Sim. So I've gone through this in all of my Snowy Escapes videos, but I will be going through it slightly in this video as well. We're gonna see what sentiments we can unlock with Bob and lives of pancakes which I'm very excited for. Yes we are getting some profiles, I'll show you how they work. Then there is a skin tone update for the console and community identified issues. We saw your feedback so as you guys know October skin tones were updated, there were still issues with them especially around the uh, bridge of the nose that I personally noticed and also redness around the lips on the darker shades of skin tones. We are hopefully getting that update in December which I will be doing a video on because they did give us an update about how that was going but they have looked into fixing them. With this patch the console gets the October fixes that us PC and Mac players got back in October. In addition, this patch addresses the two community identified issues of the red dots around the lips and a dark blotch between the eyes. The red dots around the lips should be completely resolved at this time. Fingers crossed. The dark blotch between the eyes was softened to remove the hard edge. That's the one that I could see the most last time, but the darkening is expected as part of the shadowing around the nose. To me, it doesn't look like shadowing. I'm gonna throw it out there, but I think it's the effect that they use on that area that gives it that like hard edge. So hopefully them softening it means it's not as noticeable. Vacation anywhere. Couldn't we all use a good vacation? <laughs> Stop rubbing it in, I can't travel. I'm gonna go back to America whenever it's possible, hopefully, fingers crossed if I get invited back to Sims Camp. And they're gonna be like, oh, you took like two years off, what happened? I'll be like, the global freaking pandemic happened. Now they can go anywhere. The ability to go on vacation to any of your worlds has been added to the game for all players along with the rental lot type. Toddlers now have slippers. Obviously, if you do buy Snowy Escapes, you can now set your house rule to have Sims wear slippers or to just like wear nothing at all and just wear like their socks or go bare feet. So it's nice that toddlers now have slippers so they can follow that house 
Rule, the S-pop radio station. This was actually introduced back in City Living, however the songs that were exclusive to City Living now still are exclusive to City Living, so you'll only have the expanded S-pop if you have City Living. If you don't, you get a couple of these songs. I'm not going to read every single one, but I'm a fan of that. And then there's a whole load of bug fixes, which I'm not going to go into detail with. If you want to read this, you can. All right, so I have loaded up The Sims 4. As you can see right here, we have Mount Komarebi. We are not allowed to, uh, to go on it yet. This will open Origin. Do I want to pre-order it? No. I don't know if that was there. I don't think it was before. This looks different, so I don't, I don't think it was there. Uh, but we are actually gonna um, hop on in to Willow Creek. Like I said, we're gonna check out the pancakes. Oh, it's a little bit rainy. Right, so if we go to his relationships panel, here we will find Eliza Pancakes and then you can go on open sim profile and in here you will find this dazzling picture of Eliza in her flip flops. She is a young adult, um, she is neat, a perfectionist and materialistic. It also tells you what these traits mean, which is quite nice. You can see that she is currently unemployed, you know, lazy little shit that she is. They are sweethearts. The foundation of a strong friendship has forged a lasting love and they are spouses of one another. You can also like collapse these if you don't want to see them all or you can keep them all open if it gets a little bit too, uh, too crowded and clustered on here for you. Um, so I'm actually gonna have these two interact. We're gonna share personal life goals. <laughs> what is that? I don't think I've ever seen that interaction before. We're gonna compliment her appearance. You can also read your sentiments up here as well. So sentiments about Eliza. No sentiments at the moment. Spend time together and see what happens. Well, you yeah, know what we are gonna do, Eliza? We are actually gonna adopt a kid. All right, here we go. Bob Pancakes is bringing home a new family member. They can now take family leave and then little Aubrey over here is a green fiend. We're gonna actually open up Aubrey's sim profile here on Bob. We're gonna see how Bob feels about Aubrey pancakes. They are good friends and he is his son. And we also have the open hearted sentiment, which is a neat little sentiment that we have down here. It's a positive one. It has a green background. You will notice if you have negative sentiments, they'll actually be red. So open hearted, close sentiment. Bob feels close to a recent addition to the family, Aubrey. A warm welcome. So I may have cheated a little bit and Eliza also maybe cheating a little bit because I just got her relationship and her romantic relationship up to 100% with Nina Caliente, but they have not kissed or anything yet. What, you thought this was about to be a straight video? I think not. We actually have this deeply connected sentiment up here. Eliza has a powerful bond with Nina that is a source of strength and comfort. Both of those things. Does she have that sentiment with Bob? I think the fuck not. I mean, they already have separate bedrooms. Let's not sugarcoat it here. You think this is the child's bedroom? Absolutely not. This is where Bob sleeps. <gasps> Bob's getting angry. Ooh, Bob is furious. He is very angry. He's stomping out the door. Oh. Oh, we had to come out. He had to come outside just, just to, just to let off some steam. He still has the regular old emotion of flirty spouse. But if we go to his sentiments, he is deeply wounded. This is a hurt sentiment, so of course it has the red background. Some wounds take a long, long time to heal. Being around Eliza brings up a painful memory for Bob. 
Oh, Bob. Whereas Nina, they both have the same sentiments about each other. They are both feeling very deeply connected and they are, in fact, apparently soulmates. Even though she knows nothing about her, she doesn't know anything about her traits. So we're actually gonna have Eliza come over here. We're gonna try and uh, calm things down when it comes to Mr. Pancakes. We're gonna see if we can calm him down a little bit. We're also going to ask him to... We're gonna actually try and apologize. We're gonna see if he'll accept our apology. I'm gonna collapse that. Oh, see? Negative. We are falling out of... Oh, never mind. It looked like he... Oh, until she flirted again right in front of his eyes. <laughs> Literally, he had just accepted her apology. He was okay with it. And then, and then she just flirted again. And now he has a completely different sentiment. So he's also now furious about cheating. Bob cannot believe Eliza would do this to their relationship. Just the sight of Eliza will remind Bob that Eliza betrayed his trust and cheated on him. So this is actually how sentiments affect your game. This is how you assume the emotion system is gonna work. So I feel like this is adding in that realism that has been missing because emotions really aren't that strong. Like, they are just falling out. Like, anything that she tries to do, Bob is just giving her the cold sho shoulder. Wait, what? No! I was just about to big up sentiments. So maybe his emotions do still have to line up because I wasn't expecting that to go that way. So I definitely feel like there still needs to be something here. Like these two can still sleep in the same bed even though they have different beds. I'm actually gonna send Eliza to sleep in here as well. I just need this to be pushed more. Like I feel like it isn't being pushed enough. But yeah, I just wanted a little bit more from sentiments. This is what I've said in like all of my snowy escape overviews and reviews and things like that. Like I don't think Sims should be able to sleep in the same bed if one of them has cheated and I'm apparently furious and feeling betrayed. Like I think that these sentiments should have an effect on how they act towards your Sims a bit more. And for right now, it seems like it needs to match up with emotions. So there's still, in my opinion, a lot of work to be done here. I hope that you guys who are watching this, who play with sentiments in your game, play with them for like a week, see how things are getting on with the sentiments. Like, are they affecting your gameplay? And then do not be afraid to give that constructive criticism. If like me, you feel like maybe they could be pushed further, but also not just constructive criticism, but also let the team know if you're a fan of these sentiments. If you want them to keep working on them, maybe go to previous packs and add sentiments for those, or maybe like introduce sentiments into every pack going forward so you can have more shared experiences together. If you like sentiments and you think that this like foundation should be built upon, definitely let the team know. Like tweet them, let them know how much you love them, let them know what's not working for you. I know I'm definitely gonna be giving my feedback on sentiments, but I will quickly just jump into build mode just to show off the platform. So like I said, I'm probably gonna get the most use out of this for bars and like building stages in bars and lounges and that fun stuff. So say if they had a bar in their back garden and then they wanted to build a stage in this bar, so we have the platform tool here. You also have a bunch of pre-made ones. So you have square platforms, octagonal, L-shaped, all of the like shapes that we have come to know in The Sims 4. And then you drag your platform tool out. Then I'm gonna have to build those walls again. A little bit weird that it deletes the walls. I don't really know why, but we now have a room with a platform in it. I'm just gonna grab this light for now. And then once you actually click on the platform, you can see that there's these little squares here that says raise platform or also lower platform. So you can raise this as much as you like. You can actually make toddler only accessible 
rooms if you want to depending on how high your walls are and then how high the platform goes sometimes they're only accessible to toddlers i don't know why you would want to do that but you can so this is now like acting as if it were a stage however of course you are also gonna have to have steps going up to this platform they can actually go up if it's only like one high i think I think it's one high, but we'll test that theory. And then we'll just add a door in so that they can get in. And then let's have one of them come into here. So Bob, could you wake up for me please? So Bob can now go up here on this platform and he can perform on stage. So we now have an official split leveling in The Sims 4, which I'm really happy about. I know that this is gonna be an absolute game changer for builders but also if we go back into build mode uh say if we put this octagonal one down here you can also lower it a bunch as well if you want to kill off eliza pancakes for example you could just absolutely lower that down or if you wanted to kill off bob you could just teleport a sim into there are they ever gonna get out of this pit absolutely not honestly this is what 2020 feels like. Screw being able to travel between any world and go on holiday. Nope. It's all about being stuck in a pit five feet under. <laughs> Relatable content. You can also create steps using these as well. So for example, if we do this and then click on this platform and we go up one and then we grab the platform tool again and we go here and then we do another one here and then we click on that you can go up once again and these can actually be used as steps your sim will just be able to climb them so we can have bob go here he can just climb up these platforms the routing's a little bit strange but i mean they work perfectly as stairs and then also we do have the half walls to go with these so if we go to half walls you can obviously add heights in for these stairs you can paint them different colors if you want to and there's also platform trims as well so you can paint the half walls any color like of any of the stuff that we currently have in the game or you could also just use the platform trims and put those around the platforms to have them look different if you wanted to. So they kind of work the same way as foundations when it comes to build mode. So then let's quickly run through going on vacation in any world. The first thing you're gonna wanna do is go to manage worlds because currently with all the worlds that you have in your game right now, none of them are gonna have rentals unless you obviously have a destination world such as Selva Dorada or Batu or Granite Falls but we can now vacation in home worlds that's a big deal of this patch I actually really like this I know a lot of people have been saying like oh we can finally go on holiday to Sulani I will say try not to like eradicate the culture like don't kick out all the townies and just have your rich sims go on vacation there I loved the fact that island living focused on the families and the culture but you could vacation in Sulani if you wanted to. You could vacation in Glimmerbrook if you wanted to. So all you need to do is go to the world that you want to create a rental lot in. As you can see, this is currently a residential, but if you go into build mode, it is super simple to set it to a rental lot. So all you have to do is click on this eye up here. It says lot type residential. All you have to do is scroll till you see rental, a rental lot for va your vacationing sims. We're gonna turn that into a rental. Then we're gonna go back to manage worlds. You can also do that in a world that you already live in. So for example, I could turn any of the Willow Creek lot into a rental if I wanted to. I could make the goth mansion a rental by kicking out the goths if I wanted to. Bob's been feeling a little bit strained. His relationship is on the rocks. He needs a little bit of a timeout from those sentiments. So we're gonna have him take his kid on 
vacation. So we are gonna go to his phone and then we are going to take a vacation. We're not gonna bring Eliza with us, just him and Aubrey. He should whip his phone out if he is not so obsessed with the rain. And then you'll be taken to this UI. So you have your classic destination worlds. They now have little bios about them. So if you wanna learn more about them, you can. So camping cabins, insect collecting, also Granite Falls Forest. Selvadorado, you have Explore the Jungle, Hidden Temple, and Ancient Artifacts. In Batu, you have Black Spire Outpost, Millennium Falcon and the Resistant Encampment. And then in Glimmerbrook, you have the Magic Portal, Caster's Alley, and Enchantment. I know where I'd want a vacation. So we're gonna head on over to Glimmerbrook. As you can see, we have our little rental over here, 166 simoleons per day. You just click tick. You say how many days you wanna rent it for. So let's go for two days. And then you click boom, and you are ready for that sweet, sweet vacation of a lifetime. And you also get this cute little UI now that says, forget something, you can purchase a variety of supplies to enrich your vacation experience from the phone or mailbox. Cause I know that it freaking sucks when you have to go into build mode whilst you are on vacation. So here you can buy stuff for your toddlers. You can also buy stuff for your cats and dogs if you have a pet. You can buy food bowls, you can buy a tent if you want to. There's also like some activities that you can do, pet beds, camping chairs, football, there's way more stuff in this. The last time I played this, I only had base game and snowy escape. So this is new to me, like seeing what we can actually buy. Stuff for your toddlers, if you want them, you can also buy campfires. So say for example, I wanted a book to read to my kid. I could just hit that and then it can be found in my inventory. And then I have this book that I can read to Aubrey if I want to. And that is pretty much all the new gameplay that comes with this update. So I hope this video was helpful. Like I said, I'm sure there's gonna be so many cool builds going up over the next few days of people working with platforms. You can do like a sunken living room area if you wanted to, like a little cozy nook in the middle of your living room. I'm definitely gonna do that. I think I'm gonna do that in my Snowy Escapes Let's Play because I wanna play around with a little bit and test my theories and see what I can get up to. So thank you guys so, so much for tuning in to this video. I hope it was helpful. Just a quick rundown of everything that came with this update if you haven't explored it for yourself yet. If you have already explored it for yourself, let me know how you feel about it. Are you loving the fact that we finally have platforms and split leveling? in The Sims 4. I can't quite believe it's taken this long, but hey, at least we have it now. How are you finding sentiments? Do you feel like they could be pushed a little bit further like myself? Are you liking the look of sentiments so far? I do still give sentiments my benefit of the doubt because I really do think overall it's going to change your gameplay and it's going to help to steer those stories a little bit but I think it's just gonna take a bit more time. Like I think I'm actually gonna have to play the game to see the full effect and I haven't really been able to do that yet. So I think long term, I'll see the benefits of sentiments. Whereas right now I'm like, oh, I just wish there was a little bit more when it came to these, but I really love the fact that the team are quite clearly listening to the feedback of, hey, we need some more personality and like long lasting, relationship changes in The Sims 4. So fingers crossed, that's a positive for the future. Let me know how you guys are feeling about this update and I will speak to you all in my next video. Bye.